Instagram, hi Facebook. Let's get our connection. Sorry, I'm signing on a couple of minutes late here. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about our Tuesday chat today, our um, Let's Talk Tuesdays. So I'm just going to give a moment for everyone to come on in and say hi. Um, Instagram, you know, I need you to go and say hi for me. I want to say hi to Mark02 who joined. Good seeing you. I'm glad you could join. Today we are talking about sickle cell crisis. Today we are talking about sickle cell crisis. And if you know someone with sickle cell, um, I think that you'll understand the necessity of this talk today. And I think that you'll appreciate this talk. I want to say hi to C. Nixie, who just joined us as well, too, over on Instagram. Just getting a little situated here. All right. So in way of housekeeping, I am Dr. Sabine Elise. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cornerstone Medical Group. As a physician, a pastor's kid, wife, and mom, I've come to realize to be healthy and well, you have to address more than your physical health. So I help men and women reconnect their physical spiritual and cognitive health to bring satisfying wholeness to their lives daily. I do that through my direct primary care office here in Coral Springs, Florida. And then I also love to teach. So that's why we do these Let's Talk Tuesdays. And today we specifically want to speak about sickle cell crisis, what we can do to avoid it, its triggers, and what's important. So, you know, I love to teach. And what I have really come to understand is that when we speak more about the why, why something happens, then you'll better understand the mechanism behind it. So I'm going to take all the years of what I've studied and just break it down really quickly to answer a couple of questions. One, exactly what is sickle cell? What's happening to our cells? And two, the triggers that patients need to be aware of. If you suffer from sickle cell or you know someone who suffers from sickle cell, so you know how devastating, how discouraging, and how painful that could be for that individual. And if you are someone, if you are someone who knows that person and is a loved one who's suffering, you know that it's such a state where you just feel completely helpless because you want to be able to do everything that you can to help them, and you can't because they are in so much pain. So let's get right into our topic. So we're talking about sickle cell crisis, how to avoid it. So what is sickle cell? So my Tuesday Transformers, what I love about you guys the most is you're super smart so if any of you guys want to just type in quickly what sickle cell means to you if you've even ever heard of it before throw a Y in that comment line sickle cell what does that have to do is it a type of anemia yes or no so is sickle cell a type of anemia yes or no so hit yes in the comment line if you've ever heard of sickle cell um, or if you um, Think that it is a type of anemia. All right, we see some comments coming in. So yes, uh, Marie Lucien Lechevy Joseph said yes. She is aware of what sickle cell is, and yes, that it is a type of anemia, and that is both true. C. Nixie said yes as well, too. And then we have Mark02 said yes as well. So yes, that's all right. Sickle cell is a type of anemia. So what's going on with our cells? Our cells in our body are like balls, uh, very plush, bouncy balls that are really, really soft. And they're great circles. Um, oxygen comes to those cells and it carries it to the rest of our body. So all of that is important so that we can get the oxygen to our body and to our the rest of our body. It carries those uh, that oxygen. So our cells are round. For patients who have sickle cell, their cells are like a sickle shape, a sickle shape, like a half a moon shape, like a banana shape, a sickle shape. And even though those cells should be nice and bouncy and soft and pliable, they're not. They're rigid, they're rough. They're rigid and rough. So because they're rigid and rough, when they're flowing through our blood vessels and flowing through our bloodstreams, they tend to cause damage to the lining, as you can imagine, because the edges are sharp. And they tend to not flow smoothly. So you can imagine trying to play kickball with a block. Well, it's not going to roll the way that it should. That block is kind of just going to get there and stick there and kind of stay there and not move. Um, but if you're playing kickball with a ball, then you could just let it kick, roll, and it'll go smoothly. Well, the same thing is happening in the cells of individuals who have sickle cell. Uh, they should have a ball. 
that is rolling and moving smoothly through the blood vessels, moving fluidly, smoothly through the cells. But instead, there's our sickled shape, like a half of moon. They're rigid and they're rough. And they tend to kind of just hang out together. And when they're hanging out together like that, that's a lot of the times when they're hanging out too much together in one spot, that's what's actually happening on the, the physiological level of, of a patient going into crisis. And then that produces an extraordinary amount of pain, an extraordinary amount of pain. Um, if any of you are familiar with that type of pain from yourself or a loved one, go ahead and hit yes in that comment line or hit a Y and drop that Y in the comment line. I've seen this before with patients. I've seen it um, with just individuals I know, and it's an extraordinary amount of pain. So that's what's going on. That just that the sickled shaped cell kind of hangs out together and it starts blocking off the blood flow, blocking off oxygen. So we can't do anything about those cells. There's medications that your, pay, your doctor will give you. Um, there's medications that we could try to do, but we wanna go back to that same concept of what we're speaking about and when we're talking about these triggers and how to avoid these triggers and what you can do. So remember we have this tube, these are our blood vessels, and we have these cells that should be moving along like balls, but instead they're like bricks and they're sickle, so they get kind of stuck and they're rigid and they hit each other and they hang out together. So one way that we can do what we can do is try to just do everything that we can to keep them moving smoothly. And one of the best ways that we can do that is hydration, hydration. So I gave you a very quick way of what we want to do and what's most important for the patient who has sickle cell. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is stay hydrated, stay hydrated as much as you can. So remember, we talked about these tubes, we talked about these pipelines, um, the way that we could keep the blood and the balls moving, our cells moving, is that we just add some water to it. We add some hydration to it. That's our blood flow. We stay hydrated to make sure we have enough in, in our system to, to, to really uh, help us in the, in the times when patients do uh, get crisis. So we wanna talk about these triggers very quickly. That is, I wanted to add that, just make mention of that very first because if there isn't anything else that you remember from our talk today, the most important thing for you, if you have sickle cell, and the most important thing for you as a, as a friend or a loved or who knows a loved one who has sickle cell, you want to remind them to stay hydrated as much as possible. As much as possible, stay hydrated. So we're going somewhere here where we're talking about these cells. And this is where we're gonna talk about our triggers right now. So our triggers, it's different for each person, but one of the most important triggers that occur with a lot of patients with sickle cell is the extreme of weather, particularly extreme cold, cold weather. Extreme cold weather causes our blood vessels to constrict, right? So it causes our blood vessels to constrict like this. And remember, we were mentioning about the tube. We were talking about the balls, which was our cells that need to move smoothly. If you have a sickled shape type of cell, that blood, that uh, the vessel is constricting like that because of the very cold weather, that's also going to elicit a crisis. That's going to make it more difficult for uh, the cells to flow through. So one we want to avoid extreme weathers. If you're in South Florida like me, well, it just says hot, hot. It gets hot, hotter, and hottest, <laughs> even here in December. So we don't necessarily have those extreme weathers outside, but we do have those extreme temperatures when we go into buildings. There's a lot of buildings that are very, very cold, and patients will tend to feel that. Why? Because their blood vessels are constricting, making it more difficult for the cells to move, and then you can have that illicit pain of a trigger like that. If you are traveling up north, if when you're traveling um, and you're going up into colder weathers, those blood vessels are gonna constrict. Again, that's something that can bring on a crisis. So you want to be able to pay attention to that weather. When that weather changes, if you're gonna be in a cold building, if you're gonna be traveling um, up north, and sometimes it, it really it will behoove you if you have sickle cell or if you have a friend 
or our, our loved ones sickle cell, carry that extra blanket, carry that extra jacket in the car because particularly in South Florida, our buildings are very cold and that could be the thing that does it. So number one, stay hydrated, stay hydrated, stay hydrated. I cannot mention that a month enough, stay hydrated. Number two, avoid the extreme weathers. For women, anything that stresses your body, things that stress your body is gonna also throw you into uh, a crisis. It's one of these triggers uh, when you have your menstrual cycle. So in that month that's coming, when you know when it's right around that time for your cycle to come along, this is the time where you wanna do everything that you can, that you are staying hydrated, that you're getting ready for that event. So this is where we prepare in advance for it. We prepare so that we can avoid those triggers. We prepare so we can avoid those triggers. Blessed Queen Mommy said, my sister has sickle cell. So yes, Blessed Queen Mommy, what you want to make sure is just encourage her to stay hydrated, particularly when it comes around the time of her menstrual cycle. She needs to stay very more so hydrated and avoid those extreme weathers because again, these are things that can increase and elicit uh, a trigger and a sickle cell crisis. Uh, one of the other things I find with my patients that I see here is when they are doing too much. How many of you are guilty of doing too much? Uh, just wave at me if that's the case where you're doing too much. There is so much importance to the need for rest and restorative sleep at night. Um, if you are one who is doing too much, it will throw you into crisis. When do I see this the most? I see this the most with the, the woman uh, who is a mother and has grade school children and it's the beginning of the start of the school year. And any of you know, the beginning of the start of the school year, it's like mayhem. You're running around, you're running crazy. There's so much that you have to do. And I'll never forget one of my patients. It was something that was very sad for me that was really, really, really hurt me because I'm a mom as well too. She went to the point of uh, getting all these things for her children to get them ready to go to school, was running around, took care of all that stuff and then ended up with just the hustle and bustle and preparing them. She ended up going into crisis and ended up spending the first week of their school in the hospital. So we do not want that to happen to you. We don't want that to happen to you. So what we prepared for her and put in place for her is that when you know your schedule is going to be hectic, when you know your schedule is going to be hectic, I want you to think about IV hydration. IV hydration. That's important enough for us to put in the content in the comment line. So someone hit that uh, IV hydration for me there on Instagram. I'm putting it here on Facebook. IV hydration. Yes, IV hydration. So this same mom that we had. I said that this happened this year. We cannot, we cannot let that happen again. So we made preparation before the school year started or right when she was getting to that point of doing all of those things, of running around, of preparing for her children. She went ahead and here in South Florida, they have IV hydration places everywhere. You go ahead and do the IV hydration and that's going to help kind of, that will help, not kind of, it will help um, keep you out of crisis. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep you out of crisis because we know once you pass that threshold and you're in crisis, you're in so much pain, it's much more difficult. There's so many things that we look at from the emergency point of view, of what's going on in your heart, what's going on uh, with your lungs to make sure that you're okay. So our goal is to avoid hydration. And this is a tidbit too for, that, for those women. Again, we mentioned that your menstrual cycle is coming on. IV hydration, I can't say enough about it. That IV hydration is so key. Uh, someone made mention what else, something else that's affected by uh, throws you into crisis as well too, which is correct. See, Nixie said, affected by high altitudes. Yes, when you go up into the mountains, when you're going up into the mountains, then this could throw you into crisis as well. Every individual is different because illnesses do not read the books. And because every individual is different, it's very important for you to study what triggers your crisis. Or for you as a, as a friend or loved one who has a loved one who, gets, who has sickle cell, what triggers their crisis? Because everyone needs to come around to see what triggers this crisis, 
how do we prepare for it and how do we avoid it? And there's ways that we can avoid it. Like we said in um, our initial uh, post, there's some things that you can control, there's some things you cannot control, but for the things that we can control, we want to control it. So the number one thing is you have to know your triggers. You have to know your triggers. And some of the most common triggers that we see is that extreme change in weather. When it's really cold because we're vasoconstricting our blood vessels, we see when we go to high altitudes, it's the same concept of the just the change that's occurring. And we also see when you're just doing too much uh, for women, when you're getting ready to go into a menstrual cycle as well too. So the IV hydration is key, the rest is key, and the preparation before hand is key to avoid these triggers. And I really definitely want you and I encourage you to speak to your physician to really know what your baseline H and H is, baseline hemoglobin hematocrit is. Because one of the things that tend to happen too when we're running into the emergency room, uh, they don't know your story. They don't know what your baseline is where you usually live. And they may be quick to go ahead and uh, go ahead and transfuse you. And you may or may not need that transfusion. So that's why it's really so very important for you to have an ongoing relationship and an understanding with your physician, whether that's your family medicine physician or just you want to make sure that you are aware and they are aware of the crisis as well too. I know a hematologist, he actually sets it up in his office with the high IV hydrations so that when his patients are getting ready to feel that fatigue, they have a lot going on, then what they do, they just go ahead and tell them, come on in and get the IV hydration. So I do want you to think about that as well too. So that's our time for today. I'm so glad we had a chance to, uh, to come on in. Um, I wanna say hi to Mary Lucien, Lucien Joseph, thank you for coming in. Uh, Dr. Fernandi Volsi, she said stay hydrated, good seeing you, thank you for joining us. Hi, uh, uh, Abby Akin, uh, Dia Smiley. I'm so glad you could join us. Let's see what we have here. We said, bless Queen. She says, it's fine from high enough altitude to trigger enough a crisis. My sister flew to Dominican Republic and I had a crisis over there and rushed back home because she didn't want to see the doctor out of country. Yes, flying at high altitudes will do this. And I'll tell you something else too, bless Queen Mommy. What we will see occur too is that women who are carriers, they don't even have sickle cell disease, they just are a carrier of the sickle cell trait when they're pregnant, that will induce a crisis type state for them as well too. Though they have never been diagnosed with sickle cell and they're just a carrier, that stress on the body and especially the high altitudes like you mentioned there is correct, that that will trigger a crisis. So you just wanna be prepared as much as possible. And the number one thing that you can do to take control about is do not bet against that hydration. Uh, your doctor will let you know if you need the folic acid. There's so many other things that you could do. So it's so very, so very, very important to get a physician that you feel comfortable with, that you could speak to, that they could speak to you. And there's an ongoing conversation for you to recognize your triggers and to avoid them. Um, I wanna say hi to, uh, let's see, Jacques Carline. Thank you for joining. Effie, I see you. Thank you for joining us. See Nixie, SN. And, and the sons and daughters, excuse me, of Haiti. Um, thank you for joining us. Hi, Dr. Perry Pierre. I want to say happy birthday to my brother. Excellent, excellent internal medicine physician holding it down in Palm Beach. Um, thank you so much for joining. Zero Foy Choo Choo, Caroline, Carolyn J007, Eliza Johnson, Modern Smile. Thanks for joining us. Zavik for real. Glad you could join us. Uh, Johnny in medicine. I'm glad you see. Look at all these Tuesday Transformers. I love it. Love seeing all these Tuesday Transformers. So I'm so glad we had a chance to hop on to speak about sickle cell crisis, how to avoid it, how to avoid those triggers. If there's a topic that you want to know a little bit more about, go ahead and DM me so we could have that on the chart when we are speaking. Again, I'm Dr. Sabine Elizet, board certified family medicine physician, CEO and co-founder of Cornerstone Medical Group. I help men and women bring wholeness to their health by reconnecting their physical, spiritual, and cognitive health here at my direct primary care office in Coral Springs. So good seeing you guys. See you next week. If you think this information is going to be useful to someone else, go ahead and share. And don't forget to let them know, join in and become a Tuesday Transformer. You guys have a great day and enjoy your holiday. Bye.